What's up, everybody? Blood on the Razor Wire TV in the house tonight. I know uh, we missed Sunday. Your boy was on a vacation waiting to see if people show up tonight. Come in the chat. Hopefully people show up, man. I know it's not the regular Sunday, but we'll see what's going on here. See if we can get country and everybody in here real quick. Okay, let's see what's going on. If you can hear me, let me know that you can hear me. Leave a message on there. Let me see. But we start off like this, man. Let's, let's see. There we go. Talk about a couple things tonight. I know some people. Sad. What's up, Scott Bell? What's going on? I know, obviously, people seen Ryan Leone in the picture. We're going to talk about Ryan. We're going to talk about a couple things, man, about this kid in Chicago. We'll talk about some of the stuff over there at um in Buffalo. Just just a bunch of things that are going on in the world, man. Things that are going on in your city, my city. We're going to get busy tonight, but we got to get some people in here. Johnny Leonard, my guy. He's probably going to – I started talking about this thing tonight <clears throat> in Chicago. I'm sure Johnny Leonard's going to chime in. Country, what's up, man? I'm glad to see you here, bro. Sunday night, man. Couldn't make it. Obviously, I was on vacation, but I'm here now, man. Paul X in the house. Scott. Johnny Leonard put an LOL. Johnny, we're going to debate this thing tonight. You want to debate me, man? Let's get it in, man. Hit that like button real quick, man. 38 people in the house. Myron, what's up? Did you hit that like button yet, Myron? Upstate New York, David Carvella, Long Island, Strong Island in the house. Let's go with him. When I was in prison, man, a lot of them dudes from Long Island said, nah, man, I'm from Strong Island. They would call it Strong Island instead of Long Island. Keller Code G, what's up, man? Appreciate you. Joshua Zelensky, what's up, Chad? Just finished a book. Fantastic. What book? Nah, I'm joking, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. You know, anybody that wants the book, man, if you're listening, we got the audio version. We got the hard copies. Let me know, man. Hit me up on that email, freedomfighterspc at gmail.com. And we'll definitely get the books out to you. Tyler, what's up, man? How you been, Tyler? You still giving people rides, man, and they're not paying you even for gas money? I'll see you post that on Facebook, dude. Been watching you, bro. I'm just joking. I hope you're doing all right. Adam Casey, what's up, man? Adam, always in here. What's up, Chad? Did you enjoy it here in Maine? Sucks, Leon died. Only guy I paid for to listen to stories. Rest in peace. I did enjoy Maine, man. It was a really good time, man. But yeah, we're going to get some people in here, man. We're going to talk about Ryan. We're going to talk about some things that I think are important, man. Some things that I think we should be talking about. Springfield Mass in that house. Well, so I should have went, man, I, I drove right near Boston, man. On my way to Maine and on the way home. <clears throat> Jeremy Smith, Chad is the real godfather of all this YouTube. Man, I'm not that old, bro. Got to be a certain age to get that godfather status. You know what I'm saying? It's all good, man. I appreciate you, man. So tonight's our night, man. Tonight we're going to get together. We're going to kick it, man. <clears throat> if you can, hit that like button real quick. And we're going to get into it, man. We're going to talk about Ryan. We'll talk about different things tonight, man. Ryan Leone. You know, when I seen that that morning, you know, there's people that are saying, oh, he didn't die. From that, he died from methadone or this or that. Listen, man. The truth of the matter is this, man. Anybody that watched him knew that he was struggling, man. You knew that he was struggling with his addiction, in and out, in and out. He had a desire, I believe, in his heart, man. Like, yo, I don't want to do this. Francisco Dorate, shout out from Miami, Florida. Great job what you're doing out here, brother. Definitely appreciate you, Ryan Anderson in the house. Ryan, did you hit that like button yet, man? I would be twice on fentanyl before I got clean. I probably would be dead if I wouldn't have left town. I've lost three close friends in just a year since I've been gone. Crazy, man. Chad, you're the man, brother. Nothing but honorable mentions on other channels. That's what's up, man. I appreciate people. Lexicon, peace, man. Blood on the razor or drugs aren't the answer to your problems. They only multiply them. Man, I'm going to I'm gonna pin that, man, because we're going to be talking about some real shit tonight, man. Some real live, some real shit, man, straight up. So I can't say that me and Ryan traveled the same road, right? But we traveled a similar road. And when I seen that stuff, man, my heart hurt inside, right? Gary Davis in the house. Gary, man, um, text me tomorrow, man, when you're free so we can make that happen. When I read that, man, it hurt me, man. And I don't want to say it hurt me because of Ryan, because it was sad to see that he died, right? But it hurt me for a whole different reason, man. Because I actually talked to Ryan a few times. We had a little issue um, when I probably about a year ago, man. I'd say about a year, year and a half ago. We had a little issue where there was this dude that was in prison and he was doing some real 
real weird stuff. Let's just say that, right? Doing some real, real, real weird shit in prison, man. Like, you know, dudes were thinking this dude got out of jail and he was a good dude. And I was just like, man, I don't like to get into who's a good dude, who's a bad dude. But this dude, I was in the same prison as this one particular dude, man. And the dude was just running around there and just call it how it is, like blowing all these dudes, right? Doing what? Yeah, he was playing the skin flute in federal prison. Then he gets out of prison and he's like, man, he's that dude. And we had a, a mutual friend. And I just was like, yo, man, that dude was a piece of shit, man. And, you know, you guys are hanging out with that dude or whatever. I didn't really like that dude. Yeah, Ryan passed away. I didn't really care for the dude, right? But I didn't want to get into jailhouse politics, and neither did he. So we talked a little bit. I say, man, this is the shit the dude's doing, this and that, man. Don't really want to talk about nobody. But, you know, he did some bad things to this woman that's a friend of mine. and Just a bad dude. So we had a couple little, you know, at first it was a little, I don't know, a little bit rough. But we ended up talking, man, and was like, look, man, you're on the same mission I'm on. And 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 it was everything was cool, right? The dude, make no mistakes, man. The dude was a phenomenal storyteller, right? Phenomenal storyteller. Um, he was a good writer, man. He was a good businessman. I mean, he sat down with some big name people pitching his ideas. The dude had the potential to go far. But like the title of his book, and that's why I put this on the on the on the thumbnail, wasted talent. Ain't that crazy? that his book is called Wasted Talent and that his life ends the way that it ends. And some people might be thinking, yo, Chad, what? Is it frozen? No, the chat's not frozen. Are we good? Everybody can hear me? Can everybody hear me or no? Hit me with a message if you can hear me. What's up? Okay. I think we're good. I don't think it's... It's stuck. So anyway, <clears throat> let me get back to what I was talking about, right? So me and Ryan Leon, let's let's do this. Let's do it this way. Patrick, man, why you got to say stuff like that, big dog? He wasn't playing the skin flute. He was friends with someone that was playing the skin the skin flute in prison. Um, so for those of you that don't know what the skin flute is, <clears throat> all right, all good. Johnny Williams says he can hear me. All right, because someone said that it was frozen. Okay. So anyway, like I said, man, we traveled down the same road, right? We were both in prison, federal prison. He's been around some dudes. He was around some, you know, in some tough prisons. I think he was in some FCIs that were, were tough. And he learned the system because he was an intelligent dude, man. He learned the system. And then he got out of prison and he's like, look, man. He probably looked in the mirror and said, look, man, you got this talent, man. Big homie, what's up? That's what's up, man. We appreciate you. Good looking on the audio book. I can hear you. That's what's up. Appreciate that. So I don't want to waver. I want to pay attention to what you guys are saying, but I'm gonna I'm gonna concentrate on what I what I need to say tonight, right? And then we're gonna get into Chicago too. We're gonna get into some of that stuff. And I want my boy over here to start arguing with me, Johnny Leonard. All right. But anyway, we traveled down a similar road, man. The dude got out of prison. Phenomenal writer. Look, man, I'm a writer. When you guys hear me tell them stories. I write them and then I'll read them, but I'm the actual writer. I wrote those stories and this kid was talented, man. And you know what? I'm not afraid to admit it, man. He might've been a little better than me. Um, and he was a good speaker and he could have had life by the ball. So like, Hey, listen, make no mistake. Some of these dudes are on YouTube making 40, 50, a hundred thousand dollars a month. What a month. Trust me when I tell you that some of these dudes are making that kind of money. And that dude had, that dude is labeled as a check-in. I don't know if he was labeled as a check-in, but anyway, that dude was a talented dude, man. Like that dude was talented and he could have been doing big, big things. And now you might say, Chad, you said you weren't really, I was hurt that he passed away. Are you working on a new book yet? No, I got a good idea. I got like three or four books you guys don't even know about, man, that I started, that I wrote half of, wrote a quarter of, but anyway, it's not that I, I was sad that the dude passed away. Like, damn, man, damn. And, you know, I was on my little vacation. I'm sitting at the table and I read that and I'm like, damn, man. His wife posts and says, look, man, he died last night from fentanyl. And I'm like, shy, shy town. What's up? Shy till I die. That's what's up. Howdy, howdy, howdy. That's what, that's what's up. And I, and I just felt, I went and looked at his pictures again, right? Cause I had seen the post that he had put up before and I seen his kids, man. I seen his kids, right? 
And I did get a little fuck. I did get a little messed up, man. Chad, when you come into DC, whoop, I got a couple homies over there, man. I can come through DC now. Hit that like button. Um, but when I looked at his kids, man, it did hurt me, man. And today, what I did was I donated to his to his little GoFundMe page. Is that what they call them? GoFundMe's, right? Because I didn't donate for him. I donated for his kids, man. I donated for his wife. And I couldn't, when I looked at the pictures, man, I had to think about my own kids, man. I'm going to show you guys something, man. Because this was, when I thought about him and I thought about his kids, this is the picture that I seen in my mind, man. I want to show this to you because it's an important picture. This is probably the most, one of the most important pictures, man, ever in my life that I'll ever have. This may very well be the most important picture, right? I don't know if you guys can see that. But that was on my vacation, right? And that was the picture that popped in my head, man. I thought about his kids like, damn, man. These two little boys are going to grow up without a father, man. How important is it? Yeah, and, and I'm not telling you that I donated to just tell you that. I'm telling you because like tonight, I probably should have done it before this brother donated $30, man. Tonight, if you're going to send a $5 Super Chat or a $1.99 or a $1.49, everyone that that donates, man, I appreciate you. We're going to do something special with the money. We're going to do a giveaway. We got the 50,000 subscribers. And I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this. I didn't think we were going to get 50,000 subscribers so soon. But I think we're going to do something, man, for, because like we say, the mission's for kids, right? I'm pretty, I got a pretty good idea of what I'm going to do for kids, man, getting ready to go back to school. Single mothers, single fathers out there struggling. You know, when I was a little kid, I, I wanted some good shoes and I didn't want to go to school and be embarrassed. We're probably going to do something like that, man. We're going to get some shoes for kids, book bags. That's what we're going to probably do. That's what the giveaway is going to be. Um, We might bless a single mother or two with a couple of dollars. But anyway, man, when I looked at that picture, right, and I seen these little kids, I was like, damn, man. These little kids are going to grow up without a dad, man. And this dude's in the picture with his, with his, with his oldest son all the time, man. Like, this is my little dude, man. And now that little dude don't have a dad to read him a book at night. Now that little... Dude don't have a father to take him out for ice cream. That little dude don't have a father to throw a football with him, man. That little dude don't have a father to say, come on, son, I'm going to teach you how to do your multiplication today when he gets home when he's seven years old or eight years old. He don't have a father no more, man. And, and I thought about that stuff, man, with, with my own kids, right? Like, like I told you guys before, man, that before I had kids, man, I was like, I never had to worry about no one but myself, for real. At the end of the day, man, no matter what prison I was at and whatever we did there, whether I was this guy or that guy or whatever prison, right? You know, I, I might have called shots here and there or made good decisions, but I didn't really have to. Trey Lee, we appreciate you, but, man, I would like people to donate to this cause tonight, man. Not to me, to Ryan Leone's GoFundMe page. Um, And I'll I'll try to put the stuff in the uh, thing when I when I go back and do all the stuff after the video. Um, but we definitely appreciate you, brother. But like I said, man, these little dudes are going to grow up without a dad, man. The dad that they looked up to, the dad that they were proud of, like, that's my dad, man. My kids, when they wake up in the morning, I'm not, I, I lie not to you, man. When I go in there, I get them in the morning because my wife gets up in the middle of the night. She takes care of them. Then I get up five in the morning, 530. I go take care of them because that's what time they wake up and they're looking up at me. And I'm like, I see you. And they're like, all smiles and. All of that stuff. Um, I could show you guys. You guys want me to demonstrate it? <laughs> and I looked at my own kids and said, wow, man. I don't ever want to leave my kids, man. And like I told you guys a couple Sundays ago about that Luke Combs song. Remember that? Daddy, please don't go. The little boys, are, I think I'm reading it right. I think I know the song, right? Benjamin Stewart wants a book. We got some donations tonight, Benjamin. So I'm going to give you a book. Email me. You want an audio version or, or a paperback copy? Someone paid for your book tonight, man. The big homie and Trey paid for your book tonight. Got a mosquito in here, man. But um, I realized, man, that I don't want my kids to grow up without a dad, right? And I want you guys to realize that. And I hate to say this, but like we say, man, this shit's real and it's raw, right? And some people might get offended but this is this is it, man, right here. You know, I wrote letters for people when I was in prison. People that I, I felt were changed their lives. 
And I remember this one particular letter, this kid, Jason Boggs. And this all goes into the story, man. This all goes into the prison thing. Kid's name was Jason Boggs. Jason, if you're listening or anybody knows Jason Boggs, he's from Ohio. I would love to get in contact with this dude. This dude was co-defendants with his father. His father was a drug addict. My father was a drug addict. Jason was in jail. His father was in jail. They were co-defendants on the same case. And Jason had a son. He's like, Sam, man, I need your help, man. And the lawyers are horrible over there. I'm just going to keep it. The lawyer's name was Harvey. The lawyers are horrible in Ohio. I'm keeping it one. Not all, but most of them were horrible. They didn't give a shit. Hey, the government said this. Here's your plea agreement. If you don't take the plea, this is what's going to happen. All right? So he's like, Chad, I need help. I end up fixing this stuff. Long story short, the lawyer was wrong. The kid wasn't a career offender. The prior felony or, or, or conviction that they were trying to use, he wasn't. It, it, it wasn't a qualifying offense. So I fixed it. And he ends up getting sentenced by Judge, Judge Nugent down there. And I write this letter. And I talk about him being in prison with his dad and how he can tell the judge now that he loves his son or that he loved his son when he was out. Can't remember it word for word. But I said, I would only be lying because I put my selfish choices and decisions before my son. But today I can tell you that I love my son and I mean it. And this is where it gets real and this is where it gets raw, right? People can tell you, look, man, I love my son. But man, when you're doing things that jeopardize, your freedom, jeopardize you from being a father, jeopardize you from being in your son's life, then you have to look in the mirror and ask yourself, man, who do I love more? Addiction is a serious thing, right? I see my father go through it, bro. I see my father go through it when he'd take the Nintendo, man, when Nintendo was that thing, he'd go sell the Nintendo. You wake up in the morning, and there's no Nintendo. This is at my dad. And I didn't meet my real father. I had an idea who he was, but I didn't really meet him until I was like 11. And some of you might know the story where my father actually shot at me and my mother, man, when I was two years old, or I think I was two. And my mom threw me out the window. We climbed over a fence. She threw me in a pricker bush. We got away. We got to my grandmother's house. And my father ends up leaving and going to Las Vegas. And I don't run into this cat until I'm like 11 or 12. I think I was in seventh grade, missing Guddy's class, Jefferson Middle School. And um, I, I got these free tickets to a baseball game, Rochester Red Wings. And I was kind of like figuring out who my dad was. I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to go to a baseball game with you, man. Um. Hey, man, that dude keeps saying shit like that. Country, get rid of him, homie. Get rid of him. Because we're not we're not on here doing ignorant shit. That was ignorant, homie. Why, why you got to come on here and say shit like that, man? Here, here, I'll take care of it. There you go. I'm not. We ain't got time for that, man. Saying stuff like that. Because this is about fathers, man. This is about mothers. This is about you looking in the mirror and say, man, yeah, my addiction is tough. But do I love my son enough to get some help, to say, yo, look, I got to do this. When you feel that temptation, man, are you strong enough to say, man, but I love my son more? Are you strong enough to say, I don't want my mother to bury me? That's what it's about, man. Are you strong enough to say, look, my son is here and the drugs are here. I never use drugs. So maybe I don't know your struggle like you know it. But man, when I look at it, man. And I'm in a position now where I am a father. The scales turn for me, man. The scales turn for me. Every day I could go out there and I can make a choice, right? To do something wrong, do something illegal. And then I'm going to leave my son. And then I'm going to be in prison. I'm going to be calling home. Hey, I need a couple of dollars for commissary. Now I'm taking from my kids, man. And then I would have a single mother, a single wife, who's going to be a single mother to two little boys. Struggle. Yo, you coming up on the visit? Then eventually, guess what? The visits stop, the telephone calls stop, the letters stop, and then it's over. And you're like, then the next thing you know, and I know plenty of people have seen this, next thing you know, your new girlfriend you met on a pen pal site is bringing your kids to visit you, or your mother's bringing your kids to visit you, or your father, but your girl's gone. And your kids are growing up without a dad, man. The most important thing you could do today is look in the mirror and say, man, I want to be a father, man. I want to be a dad. When you look at your son, you got to know, hey, this dude needs me, man. And I'm sure that Ryan looked in the mirror. He wasn't no dummy, man. This, this kid was not a dummy. This kid was extremely intelligent, man. But he struggled with that addiction. Like Johnny Leonard said, what did he say? He said, let's pin this. I want everybody to read this, all right? You can't worship two masters, homie. You can only have one or the other. That's real, Chad. That is real, man. I don't want these little dudes to grow up without me, man. My son looks at me. 
And he's like, damn, he can't talk, but he's starting to yell. He can't, he can't express himself, but he's yelling. I know he needs his diaper changed, man. He's like, dad, I'm counting on you. I need you, man. Animals don't abandon their kids, man. And I'm not saying this cat abandoned his sons, but he made some bad choices, man. And now all the people that were in his life are going to hurt over it. And that could be you. And it doesn't just mean drug addiction. It means, yo, man, you're out in the street. You're getting money. Listen, I've been there, man. I've been through it. Every time you take that gun and you put that joint in your waist, guess what? You're taking that chance of not being a father. And like I tell you guys all the time, if you've got a daughter, that little girl, her first hero in life is her father, man. So today's the day to be a hero. Today's the day to say, you know what, man? My drug addiction is not more important than my kids. I can't do it alone. I can't do it by myself. I need some help. I need some help. So today, you can't take care of your kids if you can't take care of yourself. So today is the day. I'm going to go to this rehab center, man. I want to get high right now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go to this rehab center and I'm going to knock on the door and say, look, man, my kids are more important than my drug addiction. And I can't conquer it myself. I need help. But you got to want it here, man. You can't just do it here. You got to want it here. You got to want to change your life. What is your motivating factor? I'm going to bring a dude on the show hopefully tomorrow, right? Ryan is a soldier in life and an angel in death. I feel you, man. Were you scared of kids at a later age? <laughs> nah, I wasn't scared, man. I was scared of being a dad. I didn't have to ever be responsible for anybody, man, but myself. I know I could feed myself. I could clothe myself. I know that I'd never want to go back to prison, but if I went to prison, I could take care of myself if I had to. I know all that stuff. But it ain't about me no more. I can't go back to prison. I got two little kids that are counting on me. I got a wife that has to pay a mortgage if I go to prison. I don't want my kids growing up without a house, house to house. I want to stop that vicious cycle, man, that we all live. You lived it. You've been there. You've been there. Chase, what's up? Gang is oyster sauce. Real talk. I see you sent me an email, bro. We got to, we'll definitely talk. Put your link up for your channel, man. Have people go check it out. Did you ever have a drug problem? No, but my father was a drug addict, man. My father was a junkie, man. My father was the most famous crackhead in my neighborhood. Ain't that sad? They used to call my father Geek and Chuck. He used to be a big-time weed dealer. He had all the money. He'd show up. He'd get high for seven, eight days. People would use him. and He, he was getting high one, one street away from me. And those of you who read my book, you know when my brother killed himself, I went looking for my dad, man. That's a true story. I went looking for my dad, and he had a needle in his arm. And he's like, come on, bro, grab my arm, help me. And you're like, damn, man, when I see what happened with Ryan, I thought back to my dad. I thought about my kids. And honestly, man, I thought of that time again. It's like, phew, look, I got goosebumps, man. My, heart, my hair is standing up. I thought about my dad, and they're getting high. And my brother just killed himself. And I'm like, damn, man. My brother had just shot himself in the head, and my father's in a house. The place where they used to call him Geek and Chuck at, and he's getting high, and I got to go find him. I got to make sure he makes it to the funeral. He's got a needle in his arm. He's like, man, grab my arm, bro. He used to wear his hat like this. He's chewing on his tongue. I'm like, damn, man, this is my dad. This is my father. And I knew, man, in that moment that I never wanted to be a father like he was, man. Do I love my father? Of course I do. Do I love my dad? Of course I do. He's my father. But did he break my heart? He did. So how many people tonight, man, who say, man, look, I'm not going to break my son's heart, man. I'm not going to break my son's heart. I'm done selling dope, man. I'm done getting high. I'm done being in the street. We had like four, three or four people killed this weekend in my city, man. How many of them dudes you think had kids? I bet you every single one of them. So when you're out there on that block, man, I told people this in my classes. Listen to what I'm telling you, man. Ask yourself, what are you worth? Let me ask you, Birdman Drug Stories, I want you to tell me what you're worth. You were drug addicted one time. Tell me what you're worth on here. Calico G, tell me what you're worth. E501 Sam's, I've subscribed to Ryan's channel. He was really talented when he came to telling stories. So sad to hear about his past. Tell me what you're worth. I want, I want to read this on here, man. His wife posted and said that he overdosed on fentanyl, all right? That's what his wife said. That ain't what Chad said. That's what his wife said. I'm, I'm worth my kids. Okay. Tell me what you're worth, man. If I had to put a value on you price-wise, what are you worth? I want to see that. Darius, what are you worth? My kids are my worth. 
So I would tell dudes in the class, I would ask these dudes, right? They used to teach a lot of classes in prison. I would ask these, there you go, priceless. There's the answer, right? I would ask these dudes in these classes. These are young kids, a lot of kids from New York, got the little baseball hat on in the class. A lot of them were bloods. And I'm like, yo, listen, man, what are you worth? Some dudes like, man, I'm worth a million dollars. And I look at this dude like, okay, what are you worth? Shit, I'm worth a billion. And I can't tell you how many people never said, yo, I'm priceless, man. So I would tell the dudes, I'm going to tell you what I'm worth. I'm going to tell you what I'm worth now and what I used to be worth. When I was on the street bagging up $20 bags, yeah, we'd buy a 62, bag that up, get a little higher, buy a big eight, bag that up in 20s. I said, that was not what I was worth. I was worth $1,000, whatever that was worth. We'd bag up a 62 back then, what, 1800 to 2200 bag up 4000 4400 That's what I was worth because I was taking a chance with my life every day. But today I'm priceless, man. And country said I'm worth my kids, man. And that's what it's that's what it is. When you say you're priceless, man, that means that all the other bullshit goes out the window, man. Standing out in front of the corner, getting money, taking a chance with your life, getting murdered. You're taking a chance of going to prison for the rest of your life. These people will put your lights out. <laughs> I don't really want to say this dude's name, but I'm not going to say his name. High profile case. He comes to federal prison. He's with me in federal prison. He's in Raybrook, right? He shows up. He's like, yo, I, I, I live next door to this kid. He gets there. He's like, yo, what up? I was pretty well known in my name, where I'm from, all right? White kid that was getting money, selling dope, selling crap. He's like, yo, Chad, what up, yo? I need some soap. I need some. I said, look, bro, I'm going to do you this favor. I'm going to look out for you, man. I said, but there's dudes here from the town, and they're going to know who you are. And they're going to jump on your ass, man. I should do a video about it. Sure enough, well, exactly what I told him. I went to lunch. I came back. He had showered. He used the soap, the toothpaste. The dudes jumped on him, sent him up top, sent him to PC. He gets out of jail. He's out here in the street again. Guess what he's doing? He's shaking. Boom, boom, boom. Making money. Hand over fist, shaking, making money. He already knew that his experience in federal prison was not good. You know what federal prison is like. You tasted it, man. There's no way out this time. Cop out's 25 years, man. And he can't make it nowhere. Now he wants to pay all the lawyers in the world to try to get out of jail. But the best lawyers in the world can't get you out, man. When they put them hooks in you and they want you, your ass is hit. You don't want to be that dude, man. You don't want to be that dude. So only YouTuber trouble kids who need to listen to. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, man. But it ain't just about the kids tonight. It's about the parents. It's about being a dad. It's about being a husband. It's about being all the things that matter in life. And yeah, we all make mistakes. Joe Mama, <laughs> paralegal from Canada. You can email me, bro. It's not just about the kids tonight. It's about the fathers, man. It's about what Johnny Leonard said. We need to change the culture, man. We must become the change that we seek to see in other people. You don't want your son in prison. I look at my kids, man, and I've said this, man. I've said this. I said, damn, man, I don't want these dudes to ever go to prison, man. They're just little kids. They're six months old. I looked at them. And I know what I have to do to stop that cycle. I got to be their dad, man. I got to be present. I got to do all the, let me see something. Let me see. Hold on one second. Let me see. You guys want to see them? Let me show you. I'm sorry for interrupting it, man. But that's what it's really about. It's about them kids, man. It's about bringing the kids. So I'm going to let you guys. Yeah. Definitely can't help anyone unless you help yourself, right? I told my wife to bring Charlie down here, man. Maybe she'll bring the boys down here. That's right. But that's what's got to be your focus, man. That's what's got to be important. What is important in your life, man? Say just a prison YouTube channel where we talk about all gangster shit. Gangster shit's cool. People want to hear it. We bring them in and then we give them the message, man. But tonight's your night. To all the fathers, tonight's your night. People are getting killed every day in my city. I'm like, man, I definitely wouldn't be in the street at 11, 12, 1, 2 in the morning. These dudes are just killing you just to kill you, man. You got to want to help yourself, man. Do you want to help yourself? Do you want to change your life? Do you want to be a dad? Do you want to be a husband? That's what it's about, man. That's what it's about. And for real, man, that stuff touched me, man. Wasted talent. This dude had, man, this dude could have wrote series, man. Series after series, man. He could have could have wrote soap operas. This dude was talented, man. Wasted talent. 
but it's bigger than wasted talent, man. Forever gone. Forever gone. Two little boys are going to grow up without a dad. His wife's going through it. I hope that someday she can heal. I hope that someday, I don't know, man, what are you supposed to say? You know how when things happen, people want to be politically correct? People don't, and, hey, it's real and it's raw, right? People, pe people want to be politically correct, not say the wrong thing. I'm going to say it like this. Maybe it's the wrong time, according to be, you know, being politically correct. But fuck all that. This is what it is, man. I hope someday that she meets a man that can somehow be a role model to the two little boys, man. I mean that, man. It's too soon to say that. That's what they'd say if you want to be politically correct. Those little boys need a father figure, man. They need someone to look up to and say, man, I want to be like him, man. I want to be like him. I don't want them to ever forget their dad, but I want them to grow up and do something with their lives, man. I don't ever want their father's death to be the reason why they might not do the right things in life. No crutches, man. No crutches. And now we'll talk about this idiot, right? What do you think about your kids taking Adderall? <laughs> that would never happen, my friend. When I was a kid, they wanted to give me, what the hell did they want to give me? ADD, uh, Melarol, and what the hell is that other stuff they used to want to give kids? My mom, my, and they're like, nah, that ain't happening. My stepfather, who ended up being a part of my life, they're like, nah, hell no. Kids are kids. Kids are going to have fun. It's all about the parents, man. Your kids are a product of who you are as a person. That's who your kids are. Your kids are a product of who you are. Let me see. Come here, big boy. Come on. Look over your dad. Yeah. Look over your daddy. Just... Someone say hi to the people. You guys want to see Charlie? Say hi, Charlie. Say hello, you. You see the TV? Hey, look at me. Here, this is what he likes doing. Wow. <laughs> are you happy, baby? One, two, one, two, three. Say hello, you. I love you. Yeah, I love you. That's my boy, man. I think Chase might be rambunctious or laying down. But that's my little dude, man. He's drooling because he's drooling because he, uh, I think he's teething a little bit. But this is him, man. Don't puke on the people, buddy. <laughs> Say hi. Say hi. I'm Charlie. And I love this dude, man. You know what I mean? And I want you to look at your son today. And I want you to say, man, I want to be his dad, man. I want to be his father. I want to be someone that looks up to him and says, man, I love my dad, man. It's up to you how you do things. It's up to you. You like the people? Say, I love you. <laughs> say, I love you. Oh, here he goes. That's the part we shouldn't have on YouTube. But anyway, man, this is my little dude, man. I love him more than anything in the world, right? And I'll do anything I can, man, to take care of him. And that means being a good dad, being a good father, being a role model, huh? Say, do, 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 do. Say, I love the people. You probably want to listen to Coco Melon, huh? Wheels on the bus, huh? But, man, that's what it's about. You know what I mean? That's what it's about, man. And when I was sitting in prison, I'm not going to lie to you. There were times, man, when I never, ever thought that this would even be possible, man. Having a son, being a father, being a husband. But you know what? I had a judge that believed in me, man. He gave me a chance. And even at my age, I was like, damn, man, I don't think this will ever happen. And it did. And now that it happened, in my mind, I'm like, wow. I was afraid, man. You might be afraid to change your life tonight. But you got to do it, man. You got to do it for your little dude, man. Huh? You being a good boy? Say hi. Say hi to all the people. You want to run? Say doop, 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 doop. Jenny? Say so love you. All right. So you guys got to see Charlie. He's getting big, right? But that's what it's about, man. It's about being a dad, man. It's about setting an example. Hold on. <laughs> so anyway, Wayfair. Sounds like you said welfare. Wayfair. Okay. So my wife bought these stools, man, and we had to put them together. And it was like just horrible from Wayfair. I'm like, what the hell is Wayfair? Sounds like welfare, right? But anyway. That's my little dude, man. Um, I think Chase is laying down. So anyway, get that kid a football. You already know that, man. We got a couple heavy bags in the backyard. You guys will see, man. You'll see what we do. I was a homeless heroin junkie when I knocked my wife up. Making the decision to put it all down to be the best father I can be is the best thing I've ever done. That's what's up, bro. And I'm proud of you, G-Mill. I'm proud of you, man. 
There's so many people that are stuck in that right now. But, man, it's up to you to change it, man. It's up to you to change it. What's most important? But I want to go to Chicago, this, this guy, right? It's just like, wow, man. Look at the country, man. Look at all the stuff that's going on. This dude dresses up like a girl. He looks like a weirdo, right? And, you know, let me tell you something about prison. And we're going to, we're going to do the, the mayor story, the mob guy that was a chomo. And in prison, a lot of these dudes fit that profile, right? And when you look at these dudes that do this shit, like the kid from Tops, where I'm from, Buffalo, New York, you look at this guy. These dudes have this certain profile, man. This kid was a rapper. You watch some of his, some of his videos. Um, and you're like, man, look, this dude's part retarded, man. And after this happened, we were uh, we we're out on the beach in Maine. And we're watching the fireworks, right? And I'm looking around now thinking, damn, I hope we're safe here. You know what I mean? I got my kids down there. They got their little earplugs on. And I'm like, I hope that we're safe, man. Ain't it crazy that you, you're you in your, your own place, man, where you could be able to go to – you could go to concerts, you could go to fireworks, you could do things and not have to worry about getting shot up, having someone do something stupid. And this kid, like in his video, he's like, I don't care. Nothing means anything. Um. 1090 did an excellent video on the kid. Honestly, the 1090 Jake's a journalist, man. He's not a YouTuber, man. The kid's a journalist. He writes well. He speaks well. He's intelligent. I'm not sweating the dude. I'm sure someone will be like, oh, man, you're sweating that dude. No, not at all. The dude's good. The dude's good at what he does, man. But, you know, we're going to start doing that stuff. I'm going to start, you know, when, when these current events are happening, I'm going to start putting this stuff together, man. We're going to start doing videos like that. We got 100, 304 people, 191 likes. Can we get nine more? Can we get an even 200, man? If you haven't hit that like button, hit that like button. You're not going to miss out on anything that we say, I promise. Apparently, the kid was a rapper awake. Like Chad said, there was too many warning signs. Way too many. I mean, like he's threatening to stab his parents. He's doing this. He's doing that. And people wonder why. People are like, yo, we can't have no more firearms. We got to stop this shit. Second Amendment, throw it away. It's because of retards like this, man. Like, you look at the kid, man. All these people. How about the dude? Remember the dude that shot up, like, the Batman thing? Dude was, like, going to school to, what, be a doctor and all that? 216, that's what's up. Dude was going to school to be a doctor. You look at this dude. This dude's a weird old man. Tattoos on his face. If you pull up and see this kid, look, what's he got, like, stitches underneath his eye? You're like, dude, Robert E. Cremo, the third. You ever watch Sanford and Son back in the day? What do you used to say? Big dummy. This kid's a big dummy. He don't care where he goes. Let me tell you something. These dudes get to prison, right? Remember him, Ginger? Yeah, that dude was a weird... Like, these people fit that profile, man. They're goofballs, man. They have that pro... They look... They just fit the part. And, you know, a lot of times, man, when you're around... You know, you see people that... Chomos, and we've talked about this. They fit that profile, man. Like, they all look the same. 90% of them. There are some that are just... You'd be like, damn, dude. You find out, you're like, what? You're like, what the? When I was in state prison, I used to work out with this kid, man. He was up from up near Comstock, New York. We were in, um, where were we at back then? Oh, we were in Adirondack Correctional Facility across the street from Raybrook, state prison. He used to work out with this kid, man. Not on no homo shit or nothing, but dude was a good looking kid. Blonde hair, blue eyes, worked out all the time. He had to go back to court. I'm like, go back to court? What happened? Turned out, you know, dude was 18, 19 years old, and, and he was a, he was a Cho. He was a Chosky. So sometimes, you know, some people don't all fit the profile, but a lot of these people do. Cho Moles, these mass shooters. This dude's just down here shooting people, man. He says he don't care where he goes in one of his rap videos. You take one of these dudes and put him in prison and beat the shit out of him? Has some of the homies kick the shit out of him? I'll bet you. I'll bet you they wouldn't want to do that stuff no more, right? And, you know... I don't want to be politically correct. Grim Lord, what's up? Dick Tyler, what's up, dude? Albany, New York in the house. That's what's up. So they think they, they, they don't care. And let me tell you something else, man. You're sitting in that cell. I did a bunch of time in the hole, right? I did like 14 months straight one time. Sitting in the hole. This kid sits in the hole. I guarantee you, man. Seven, eight days, he'll be sitting in the corner. He might be rocking. You think he's got mental health problems now? He's going to have some room. It's going to take seven days to break this kid. This kid's a retard. He's a goofball.
Let me tell you something. They never been nowhere. They never seen nothing in life. But I don't care what no one says. You took a couple of these cats. You say, okay, you want to do some bullshit like this? We got, we got, we got something for you. Some people might not agree, but you know what? We're living in a different world. We're living in a different time. Your safety's at stake. Your kid's safety's at stake. When your kids can't go to school and be safe, we got problems, man. How about you take these dudes and you know what? They get their little fair trial. Really, you know, I believe in, in rights, but, you know, a lot of times, a lot of that stuff's just on paper. Isn't really how things work. What happens you take this cat to trial? Gets found guilty. We know he's guilty. There ain't no damn appeals. He's, 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 he's. Do I think the kid will get? <laughs> I think the feds are going to charge him and they're going to strap his ass to that chair. That's what I think is going to happen. Maybe they're going to give him the death penalty so he won't be around people. But let's say we take these kids, we take this cat to trial. He loses. He cut his arms and his legs off. Everything done in the hospital. Now let this cat, Matthew, I sent you a, I called you today, Matthew. I want you to call me when this ends, bro. Can you call me? I think I sent you my number as well. But call me. You got my number on your text message too. Um, as soon as we end this. Well, what happens if you take this guy, you surgically remove his arms and his legs? Oh my God, Chad, you can't say stuff like that. Well, oh my God. They keep doing this bullshit, so you got to make him make him an example. And then you let him go out there and live his life with no arms, no legs. I bet you people think twice before they start shooting people. Oh, my God, Chad, you're talking about capital punishment. How could you do that? I don't know, man. When you're out shooting innocent kids, man, it's all over with, man. Fairness? You got rid of fairness. And I'm telling you that from the perspective of being a jailhouse lawyer, Telling you that from the perspective of spending 18 years of my life in prison. I'm telling you from the aspect of sitting in the hole for 14 months. You know, I've done 30-day stints, 90-day stints, being in some of the worst prisons in the country. What happens when they do that? What happens when they do that? Cut his arms and his legs off and let him live his life. He'd be the most miserable son of a... And who would want to live like that? And I know everyone's going to have an answer. Everyone's going to have an answer for it, right? Well, if you do that, then they'll just off themselves. Nah, a lot of them ain't got the balls. This kid didn't have the balls. The top shooter, he didn't have the balls. I think life without pro is a much worse sentence than the death penalty. There's, pe Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I'm not saying death penalty. I'm saying cut his arms and his legs off in a hospital. Sew him back up, make sure he lives. Let him live a miserable existence where he can't even wipe his own ass. Because he didn't care about the people that he was doing what he was doing too, right? The other side of life. Whoa, my boy ain't playing no games. Yeah, but let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about some of these cats, right, when they go to prison. Some of these goofballs go to prison. And they go to their own little prisons, their special little prisons. And they're not miserable. Like a lot of these Chomskys, they're not miserable. They're living with their people, man. They're having a good time. They're screwing each other. They're playing the skin flute. And they're like, this is my community. These are my friends. Hi, Billy. How are you? You want an apple to the face? Like some of these dudes don't get the apple. They don't get the apple to the face. Remember we talked about the apple to the face at Lexington? I want to bring one of my dudes on here, man, Um, who was doing some of that stuff. You know what I mean? But it's just like these dudes, some of them are happy where they're at. They're not living a miserable life. People in the public think, oh, they're in prison for the rest of their life. Must suck. They're eating, they're eating bread and drinking water. No. They're in here living good. Their mom's sending them commissary money. They're getting visits. They're screwing each other. I mean, this is the stuff that they're doing. <laughs> they go, let me see where the hell. I don't know. So there, right? I mean, these these are Oakleys. These ain't Chomo 5000s. But, you know, you see these dudes on the compound. They're like, hey, Billy, how are you? How you doing today? You heading to the law library, bud? Yeah. For what? To read Hooked on Phonics. These dudes are not, like, these dudes are living their own, they're living their lives, man. <laughs> Kyle Metz. Yeah, so not everybody lives in a miserable existence. But people like this dude, Cremo, 
Cream rolls should be creamed, man. They should just punish this cat. And sometimes our system of punishment, like things vary with me, right? Sage, yes, Ryan passed away. To read Hooked on Phonics. So, yeah, like these people are like blank, man. Like when I say they fit the profile, they're like, and you're just like, yep, we know. Like I tell you guys a story, the kid walked up to me and he's like, hey, man. He's talking to me, he's like, I'm fucked up, man. My paperwork's fucked up. And dude walks up like, hey, man, if you're not fucked up, this dude's a piece of shit. Yeah, they used to hang out, man, like in, in, in um, FMC Lexington. They used to hang out down there, man. That's where they would hang out. They go down there and read magazines. All your tax dollars are paying for all these magazines for them to read. People magazine. They used to love people. Um, they used to do some vicious, vicious shit in there too with magazines. They take pictures of. I don't even want to talk about it, man. I don't even want to say it. Billy Brahma and I are from the same project in South Boston. Are you talking about Billy Brimer? Billy Brimer. You want to know something about Billy Brimer? Just wrote a letter for Billy Brimer, bud. That's my letter for Billy Brimer to his judge. I'm trying to help Billy Brimer get out of prison. I think he deserves to get out. Joe Lotz, it's all good. Johnny Leonard, through pop culture, we allow everything to be put in the racism category. We allow the monster and act like we don't understand what happened. I'm not arguing with you, Chad. I know you see it, too. Do the wall ball voice, Chad. All right. You guys want the wall ball voice? You got to you gotta donate, man, to Ryan Leone's GoFundMe page tonight. Even if it's $1, man, there's two little boys without a dad. So we'd be out there, and I'd be talking to old John Powers, and he'd hit me with, you want to play a little wall ball, bro? I'm like, what the? F when I, when, for real, like, I've told you guys this stuff, but the first time, like, when I really talked to that dude, hey, Chad, it's Rob from Convict Inc., the stand-up dude. Love what you're doing, bro. I think Rob from Convict Inc. is a very good dude. I think he's had his struggles. He's an intelligent dude. He was a good jailhouse lawyer. He was also a phenomenal writer. Um, I, I, you know, we're friends, man. So I, I'm friends with Rob, but I want to see him do the right thing and not argue with people on YouTube, man, because it gets him nowhere, you know. So anyway, man, John Powers first met him, man. He starts talking to me. I'm like, what the? F then he bites his finger off. He's like, I'm like, what the? F he put his finger in a pill bottle, right? Brings it outside. Chad, have you listened to any of Leon's stories? Yes, I did listen to some of his stories. Um, I think he's a phenomenal writer, good businessman. He could have had life by the balls. He could have had life by the balls, man. Beautiful wife, beautiful kids, and now it's forever gone. Can't replace it. But anyway, you flow, who died? Ryan Leon. So, yeah, when you're out there with him, he was also taking this stuff. What You guys might know what it is. It's called Boost. Boosperin or boost. What do they give mental health people? Like boosperin or something? And he'd have that stuff out there. He'd be like, you want to try it out, bro? It'll put you, it'll put you right out, man. I'll put you right out of the sleep. And I'm like, no, holy nah, bro, I'm good. And I was with there it is. Boost boosper. I can't say the right word. Yeah, boost bar. There you go. Boost bar. There it is. He'd bring that stuff out because in federal prison. What they would do is they'd start crushing up your pills and turn it into powder. And these dudes would like take their pill and stick the powder in their mouth. I know this is absolutely ridiculous. And then they would take it when the nurse walked, let me see, open your mouth. And they got the shit all the way up here in their gum. They're like, Meow. and they would spit the shit out and sell it to people, man, for commissary. And people would take it. I wish John would reach out to me too, bro. I do. Chad, Charlie's beautiful, man. Good for you, bro. You so deserve success and happiness. Well, I appreciate it, bro. But that, um, well, butrin. These dudes are like sniffing well butrin in prison. I'm like, what the f dude, what are you doing? Oh, it's Leone. I call him Ryan Leone. You think Connor's gonna make a comeback? I don't know, dude. He's got so much money, man. Maybe it's time for him to just come in, rock someone's wig, and then just retire and be done with it, right? Leave on top, man. Home run picks, fentanyl got Ryan. That's what his um, that's what his wife said, man. Sadly, he's got two little boys. So anybody that wants to donate, I don't. I'll try to put up the link. If I don't, man, just type in Ryan Leone GoFundMe page. If you're planning on leaving a donation tonight, one dollar, five dollar super chat, 
Please, man, send it over there. The kids need it, man. And, you know, he was friends with Johnny Depp, right? I mean, this dude was brushing elbows with important people, man. Like, these are important folks. Brushing elbows with people like that. Another guy, I don't know if you guys know, was very good friends with him. They worked together, I believe, was uh, Seth Ferrante. Phenomenal writer. Phenomenal writer, man. Check him out. That was one of Ryan Leone's friends, right? I hope I'm saying it right. Um, but uh, he's doing big things. Seth's doing big things. He's always done big things. He got out of prison. And, you know, he had a focus. He had a mission. And he stayed on his path. You know, I can name 100 people. Adam Clawson. You guys might not remember. I, I interviewed Adam in the early stages of my channel. Adam had 213 years in federal prison. For robberies, they were robbing massage parlors, stack nine twenty four C's. His judge took a chance on him in the third circuit, and released him. And in the third circuit, now you can't get out. They're saying judges don't have the power to determine what's an extraordinary and compelling reason to reduce a stack nine twenty four C sentence. They're saying the change in law, Congress said it was wrong, but it's not an extraordinary factor. So Adam got lucky, but Adam's in Las Vegas, Nevada. Got married to the girl that stuck by him in prison. They had a beautiful little son. And that dude's a father and a role model, and he's helping people with reentry services. That's what he's doing, man. He's doing everything he said he would do in prison. He got out and did. Cedric Dean. I was supposed to interview him, remember? And he started interviewing me. Like, that dude is doing everything that he said he would do. So many people get out of prison. It's usually dudes that do a lot of time. When they get that chance, they get out here, they start doing big things. Tomorrow, I think we're going to do a live with a dude that was in Big Sandy. Came home, and I think it's okay to say, I think he's a multimillionaire now. He's going to teach you guys how to do it. How about that? How about we interview him tomorrow? We do a live interview. You guys can ask questions because it's something people are probably going to want to ask questions on. And we see what's up. He's got a program. He's 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 got <laughs> The dude came home and did his thing, man. He came home and did his thing, and he's going to share some of that with us. And hopefully, um, you know, AT Maddox, I will put up country. Can you go on GoFundMe right now? Type in Ryan Leone GoFundMe and find that and post it. Danielle, maybe, could you post the link real quick for me? Right on this chat for anybody that wants to donate to the Ryan Leone um, GoFundMe page. Um, Let's see. Let's do it this way. Let me see. And isn't it crazy, like his last post? Was well, something about leaving this world, going to the other side or something? I thought that was absolutely ridiculous. When I read that, I was like, what the fuck? Huh? So here it is, Ryan. Hold on, man, because I really want people to donate to this GoFundMe page, man. It's super, super important. I'm looking at his page right now. Like, this is one of his little dude, man. It's one of his little dudes, man. Don't that make you think about your own son and how much you want to how much you want to take care of your kids and be a dad? Damn, bro. How do you leave that little dude behind, man? Ain't nothing more important than that little little kid, man. You know what I mean? I don't know, man. Yeah, certified. I need the actual thing. You hear me? I need the actual thing that's posted on his wife's Facebook, Karina. It's on Karina Franco. Let's see. Wow. That's it right there, man. That's why you got to do the right thing. That's it. Okay, I think that's the one that's up on his wife's thing. His wife is talking about he, she don't know where her and the boys are going to live at on here. Ain't that sad, man? It's fucked up, man. I can't find it right now, but it's on it's on her page. But I think that's it. Certified. I donated, man. Danielle Foster donated. Um, if anybody. Anybody wants to donate, man, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. Do it, man. It's going for a good cause. I promise you that, man. Like those people need it, man. 
And I'm hoping that people like Johnny Depp rub elbows with this kid. Do something, man. Do something for the kids, bro. Johnny Depp, do something for them kids, man. I know his parents, I, I, did his mom pass away or his dad too? Not too long ago. Someone did. Sad, man. The one Danielle posted is the real one. Let me see. All right. I don't know. I don't know. I know the one on her page is probably the real one. He was making money. How can she be homeless now? She's not homeless, man, but they might not know where they're going, man. When that money stops, guess what? Who's going to pay the rent? Who's going to pay the mortgage? And how much money was he really making? And how much was he spending? So, so this is the one that's on her, her page right here. Let me see. The lights are too bright, huh? That's on Karina Franco's page. So anybody that wants to donate, man, it's on her page. I believe that's the real one. I think it would be nice to do. Yeah, Seth Ferrante is phenomenal, man, with them documentaries and all of that. How do you guys say it? Documentary? I call it documentary. Yes, he did. He died. He passed away. Trey Lee, I believe 100% that she's doing the right thing, bro. I believe that 100%. But don't, it's not about that. It's about them little kids, man. Chris Clapp, Ryan Leone passed away, bro. We're trying to get people to donate to his GoFundMe page. Don't send us nothing tonight. Send it to them. Do you know when Tommy Reynolds' date is? I don't know Tommy Reynolds' date right now. I mean, I could look it up, but I don't want to mess up our screen right here. But anyway, man, that's what tonight was about, right? Tonight was about being a father, man, being a husband, being a mother. Putting the scales up, man. Go this way or go that way. Which way you want to go? Who you want to be involved with, man? You want to be your, be a father, be a husband? What's more important? What do you work? What are your kids worth? Ask yourself that, man. Good old Sparky. I'm going to tell you why, man, because it ain't about him. It's about them two little boys, man. I just showed their picture, man. It's about them, dude. It's about a wife that's no longer got a husband. There's no more money coming into the house. It's about two little boys. And I didn't say you have to. I said, anybody that wanted to donate to us tonight, please don't donate to us. Donate to them. Anyone that wanted to send a super chat or, you know, $2 or $5, send it to them because we don't want it. I don't want it. I want it to go to them. Because there's two little boys without a dad, man. He offed himself. Yeah. I'm talking about these dudes, though. Those little dudes need it, man. They're heartbroken. Some other video said it was gastrointestinal issues that caused his death. Man, I don't know. His wife posted it was fentanyl on her page. Jim J, what do you think about Bill Ackman only donating $18,000 when he's worth $2.8 billion? Donated $18,000 to who? Listen, man. Like I said, it's not about him. JoJo AZ, kind of disrespectful. What's disrespectful? Don't gastrointestinal. That's the legal way to say OD'd. That's what it is, man. You watched him. You knew he struggled. Rest in peace, Ryan, but he was a bad liar. I think he was a good writer, man. Yeah, 18,000. Holy shit. They donated 18,000. That's what's up. If he donated 18,000 shit, you think he'll send us a super chat for 50? <laughs> I'm just joking, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is, man. Everybody's not going to be happy. Some people are going to dislike people, but it is what it is, man. Gabe Fontana. There you go. Gabe, what's up, big dog? Might have some good news, Gabe. Replace pinned message. There you are. Never judge a man until you walk in his shoes. But anyway, man, I got some good content. I'm putting things together. I'm going to do that live. The other thing I'm going to do, there's 301 people in here. The Super Burpee. Remember my guy on there? 
We're going to do a giveaway on that too. If anybody can do a better burpee than that cat, we want you to send your videos. Country, put up the email, freedomfighterspc at gmail.com. And we're going to give a $500 giveaway, man. If you can beat that super burpee, we're going to give you $500, man. Send your videos over to that email. And that's what's up. Who's this? Chase? You guys want to see Chase before we go? Come on, big fella. He's a little grumpy. All right. He's a little grumpy. Let me see. Let me see. What do you got for me? It's time for a bath. You guys want to see Chase? Here's Chase. Say, I want to go left. I want to go left. I want to go right. I want to go left. I want to go right. Say hi, Dad. I want to go left. I want to go right. I want to go high like Superman. Woo. So now you guys got to see both of my boys tonight. Dad loves you. I tell you a secret. I love you with all my heart. Yeah. You love me? Say hi. Say hi to all the people. Say hi to all the people. Say hi. Say hi. Someday this kid will be a lawyer. He's serious. <laughs> yeah, that's why. He's so serious. He's going to be a lawyer someday. Gay Fontana, it looks like you, bro. You see these little piggies? Do, 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 do. You see them little piggies? I love you. Say hi. Ready? Let me see if I can make him smile. Go left. Go right. Say, I want to go left. I want to go right. Say, I want to go high, Dan. He's more interested in the camera. <laughs> Maybe he's going to be a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give you back to mommy. That's nice. <clears throat> so those are my two little dudes, man. And I love them, man. Love them with all my heart, man. And I want you guys, man, to go tonight. Texas Prison Stories. That's my dude right there, man. Go check him out. Most of you probably already do. Tim Snow in the house, in the building. But look, man. Tonight, man, go tell your son that you love him, man. Give him a hug, man. And if you're struggling... Go look in the mirror and know that you can't help your kids until you can help yourself, man. Change your life. Go get some help. Keith Ren Remedy. Yes, he's gone. So, good old Sparky, Christian Bartolett. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you. The real Bamsky. The real Bamsky. This dude, man, he's always in here, always supporting the channel. That's what's up, man. We definitely appreciate you. Shy till I die. So look, man, we're going to close the show, but tomorrow, man, I'm bringing the dude on. I think we're going to do a live. And me to do that was in Big Sandy. Came home, had a plan, changed his life, man. He's going to teach some people tomorrow, hopefully how to get out of prison, man, and get yourself together, get you some real money, doing it the right way. But um, Karina Franco, yes, that's, that's his wife's Facebook. Also, you can go look at it on there. Go well, check that out, man. If you feel like donating, donate. If you don't, that's all right. But, man, I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Go tell your son that you love him, man. Give him a hug. Give him a kiss. Read him a book. Tomorrow, man, depending on your son's age, take him out in the backyard, man. Throw the football with him, man. Help him with their homework when school starts. That's what that's what matters, man. Hit that thumbs up, man. We're out of here, man. With respect until tomorrow. Blood on the Razor Wire TV. See you tomorrow.